Okay, so here's our first update. We finished the uh, vertical stabilizer as well as the rudder, which uh, you can't see, but it's over on the side there. Um, these just glued in place with high saw. Um, Duncan and I worked on that. We also glued these little stringers in, support stringers, uh, to keep all this stuff from bowing. You can see them down on the bottom. These keep it from bowing sideways, and uh, these keep it from bowing long ways. That was a pretty fun process, not too difficult. Uh, if you're doing this for yourself, one thing I'd recommend is um, don't trim these ribs. Don't trim them at the front, trim them at the back because um, this is a much more aggressive angle. So if you mess it up, uh, it, it throws the shape off quite a bit. So just trim all the stuff out of the back, shorten them up, uh, and, and you'll be great. So this was done, same process in the rudder. Right now we're ma uh, making this, this, uh, this airfoiled section, which basically streamlines the whole tail section. Uh, this is a fiberglass part that pops right on there. You see it's being held in place by the rudder eyelets. But I've got to come and trim all these uh, ribs down so that this fits and is perfectly streamlined. Um, so that's one of the projects that's on, on the docket. We'll be working on that. Same thing with the rudder. You can actually see it over there. Um, that has an airfoil section that goes on the front. There's like this uh, leading edge cuff. Has to be trimmed down and properly fit. Fiberglass is really not fun to work with. It's really gross. It smells pretty badly. You gotta wear a mask. Um, so I'm putting it off because I don't like working with fiberglass. Also, this also has to be bonded into place. And I don't wanna bond it into place uh, yet until I get, I'm, I'm waiting on parts. I need, for the actual elevator, I need the ribs. They sent me the wrong set of ribs, so I'm waiting for those. I don't wanna have to bond or mix high saw up twice. Uh, I always have too much. So I wanna bond all this stuff at once and until I get those, I'm not gonna work on these because these have to be bonded as well. Just, we'll save time. Same thing with varnishing. I don't wanna varnish anything in the front until I get those pieces ready to varnish so I don't have to mix varnish up multiple times. So here's the elevator section. Actually, this is not the elevator. This is the horizontal stabilizer. Um, elevator we're waiting on. Got all these things reamed out. It was very difficult. You had to get in from the side. Ended up just grinding the back of my reamer so that I could put a socket set on it and get at these from the angle because trying to do it by hand, total waste of time. Um, these bearings and bushings uh, were really bad um, just from the factory. This one, in fact, is way too small, and I'm, I'm not really sure how to solve this problem. But I took these two pieces, um, I, I'll put a picture up, and had these professionally milled at a machine shop. Um, Kid Fox recommends that you chuck them in a drill, and I'll show you how to do that, but uh, chucking them in a drill and putting sandpaper around them just doesn't seem very accurate. It's also very time consuming. So I chose the machine shop route, which was not only a time saver, but also saved some frustration. This is how the manual recommends you shape these. It's called chucking it in a drill. So you put the internal bearing in. This is called the bushing sleeve. You put it into a drill. Hold it like this. And you get sandpaper. Like, here's just a piece of sandpaper for demonstration. And you hold it on the end, basically, and you turn this like a lathe and sand it down until it fits perfectly inside one of these. Um, these are for the actual support for the horizontal stabilizer waiting on eyelets to go on here. I can't advance on this. There's things I'm waiting on in the tail. Cannot advance on that until I get those eyelets to support it. So who knows, those are supposed to come in, in two weeks. So waiting on that, um, that would be for the elevator. The horizontal stabilizer is for the most part finished. So this right here is a trim actuator that, uh, again, I'm waiting to finish the horizontal stabilizer uh, so that I can get that rigged up and to finish the horizontal stabilizer, I need those eyelets. So we're still waiting on those parts. I also want to rig up the flight controls. Still waiting on the eyelets. So until I get those eyelets, a lot of this stuff's going to be on hold. I'm waiting on eyelets uh, right now. I would finish this trim portion down in the bottom, finish the elevator, finish the flight controls, which go all the way up to the future fuselage and then to the ailerons. Um, but until I get those little eyelets, I'm not going to advance on any of these pieces because one thing I've noticed is you don't want to finish anything until you know it works. So I'm not going to try and bolt anything in place finally until I know that this whole rigging is fine. So wait, I'll wait for those little eyelets. 
we'll get all these tubes connected and then I can keep going. But I'm still sort of starting little projects that are kind of down the road to try and keep myself busy until those parts come in. Uh, here's what we worked on today. This is the uh, rudder pedal assembly with the, with the optional adjustable rudder pedal. Um, so I had to put these pulleys in and fabricated these little metal aluminum, or not aluminum, stainless steel straps, um, which I cut my finger pretty badly doing. This is why you should wear gloves. Uh, Duncan sanded these down, got the bushings just right. Took him a lot of time. He actually has a very clever method where he just, he matched the bushing with a piece of sandpaper that he masking taped. So he just slides that over the end, which he's got one here, and sands it uh, to fit, which right, is genius. Uh, Duncan is an expert sander. So Duncan's working on that. Uh, we've got one pretty much done. I've uh, pilot drilled the actual uh, rudder pedal here. You can see these lines aren't perfectly straight, but uh, pilot drilled these holes and then I'll rivet this and this whole outer section will move and the inner section so each pedal will be independent of the other. Pretty cool design, but a lot of work. I mean, we spent basically two days uh, trying to get these things to fit together. In fact, I got one of these pieces stuck on here for about 20 minutes and panicked uh, because I couldn't get it off. But fortunately, we were able to get it off because um, everything's just so tight. So flight controls, you can see I uh, worked on, I've got these actual sticks in the control sticks and the whole control column, which pivots. It still needs sanding work because uh, there's a little bit of resistance in here that uh, we've got to work out. But in general, the bearing on the, uh, the, the main assembly bearing, which I'll show you, that is all set. It's just this plastic bushing that needs to be worked on. Here's the first thing that we actually uh, put together in terms of the flight controls. It's, it was the prefab kit, so hang on. So these parts were actually machined for me uh, on an automated mill at the shot factory, uh, but we had to go through and back drill to get this into the frame, put these stops in. There's actually our very first rivet, which had to get drilled and re-riveted, uh, but there was our first rivet. Uh, we got these little uh, these are actually stops. You can see that the screws run into the stops. We got those guys in. This bearing and bushing combination was incredibly painful. It required a lot of uh, reaming and then sanding. Uh, and then once we actually put the flight control column in, this whole section, when it attached the other bearing on the other side, bent it downward. So we had to re-ream this hole uh, to accommodate the tilt in the... Um, actual the actual rod. So, so if you look on the other side, you can see that white bearing. That Duncan has spent hours sanding. Maybe not an hour. He probably spent an hour sanding, and it still needs another hour to make these flight controls nice, nice and smooth. Um, that's the only thing holding up the resistance at this point. Uh, today I was working on the control column, or the sorry, the um, whatever they call it, the center console that has the. Adjustable rudder, pedal, eh, adjustable rudder pedal levers, as well as the flat lever. Uh, this has some detents, basically, that need to be back drilled and riveted in place. This one I actually back drilled and temporarily screwed into place, and it's just being held in with, with the castle nuts while uh, I'm, I rivet this stuff and get it all in place. The floorboards, uh, I had to shape the edges. These are just balsa wood floorboards, but as you can see here, as you can see here, I had to sort of cut these curves down and then back drill it, uh, back drill it to get these holes in from underneath the fuselage. But they're, they're fit in place and they've been sanded down to the right size. So as I mentioned, the floorboards have to be finished and varnished, but I'm waiting to do this until I get my elevator ribs in and get those finished because I want to varnish these things both at the same time because otherwise I'll mix up too much varnish and then I'll have to mix it up twice and that's that's a whole just mixing varnish takes 30 minutes so uh, I just don't want to have to do that thing twice and I always end up with extra so it'd be more efficient if I just do it both at the same time um, but as you can see most of the control column in here is finished getting the actual control stick pivots in was very challenging had to fabricate that right side so that it sort of snapped in place. I, I feel like they could have designed that a little better. Um, I feel like I had to break it to get it in, but it's in. 
and it comes in and out. Very difficult, but it comes in and out. Um, and uh, we've pretty much gotten all the friction out. The roll function is almost completely frictionless up in here. Uh, it's the pitch function right now that needs sanding. Okay, bell crank. So this is uh, the aileron bell crank. This little guy here, spent a whole bunch of time trying to get that to fit. The ends of the bell crank, so there's a uh, basically a shaft, right? The ends of it are too long because of the powder coat. So I ended up sanding the powder coat off the tabs on the bottom and the top. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, I should have just taken the powder coat off the end of the actual shaft, which I did on all the other bell cranks. There's two other ones that I've worked on. Actually three, four other ones that I've worked on. Uh, but just cut down the shafts a tiny bit to compensate for the powder coat. Don't sand anything off the fuselage. Just don't do it. This is the Flapron uh, mixer assembly. So this is actually where your flaps are controlled and that bell crank connects up in the front up here uh, by, with a rod that comes all the way back to this bottom section here and makes the flaps pivot. Whoops, makes the flaps pivot side to side. <clears throat> um, can't connect any of these, still waiting on those rod ends. So this is just another, this whole assembly can't be finished because of the rod ends, but it still makes some progress. This whole section here moves, this big bar moves up and down based with, with this bell crank and the flap lever up in the front. And that's basically called, it's called your flaperon mixer. So as you can see, both ailerons move equally up and down with this, but then they can also turn independently. So this is how you get your roll function and this is your flap function out of the same, basically the same control service. So that's a flaperon and this is how it technically works. Very clever design. Uh, I like that a lot. So that's pretty much all we've gotten accomplished. Um, rudder pedals, vertical stabilizer and rudder are started. Uh, vertical, sorry, horizontal stabilizer is got ribs in place and um, support structures. It's been varnished and, and glued. Everything's set with that. Still waiting on tail ribs and these little eyelets so we can connect the rest of the controls. Flight controls, the control columns in, the control sticks are in. Again, still waiting on the eyelets. Um, the, all the levers for the flap lever and then the rudder pedal levers and the center console are being worked on currently. Um, the next project for tomorrow, again, will be finish this. And then we'll have technically all the things that you will touch with your hands and feet will be in the plane. And it'll be pretty fun. So working on that, floorboards still need some work. There are tools that you need, which I will put up a list of tools. Uh, but uh, there's a list that Kit Fox gives you uh, for builder tools. It's by no means conclusive. Uh, you need, I have a list that I uploaded. You need a lot of somewhat specialty tools. You can do without them, but it's just gonna waste you a huge amount of time. Um, so just get the right tools, don't screw around. And uh, yeah, so I, I uploaded that list already, it's online. Everything takes longer than you expect from the factory. Things aren't round sometimes, not, not round, it's not that they're not round, but they're you know, not sized appropriately, so you have to resize them. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, chuck things in a drill and ground down outer di diameters or ream things out, which is just basically running a, a it's kind of a drill bit through the hole to get it to be exactly the right size. But in reality, I found that you end up having to make, make it a little bit bigger than the exactly the right size because otherwise it, things bind, particularly in all these pivots. So a lot of time reaming it, trying it, bolting it in place, realizing there's friction, reaming it again, bolting it in place, realizing that there's friction. Just keep doing that over and over again until you work out all the friction that's in the system. A lot of this little stuff, it's hard to film because like this took more than all day and it was Duncan sitting there just doing this. So that's, I don't, I can't film stuff like that. It, you wouldn't even like watching it uh, and even putting some of this stuff together, it'd be pretty prohibitive to try and film. So I'm just gonna film updates. Um, uh, the actual process I can try and take pictures of, but so much sanding and, and drilling and stuff like that, that not interesting to see on, on camera. But these bigger projects I'm trying to get time lapses of, I'll put those up, you know, gluing those stuff things, things in. When I get to covering and doing the wings and things like that, then it'll, it'll work out to get some, some good footage. So yeah, all in all, it's pretty good. We've been doing this for a little over a week and a half and probably have another maybe three weeks of work before I have to go, um, before I have to leave the project. So maybe we'll get the controls finished and the tail finished and then 
be ready to start the wings. But uh, no guarantees. You know, everything you would expect it to take five minutes just to put it together. So it's like, oh, all you need to do is slip this bolt in and um, you know, slap these two things together. But if it says that in the in the manual, you can expect to add two hours of work because nothing will fit right off the bat. You're just gonna have to re-sand it, re-ream it, re-drill it, etc. cetera. Uh, the inventory is pretty messy. Uh, I've actually learned it a little better. Like most of your hardware that you need is in a single box, but there's some of them in different boxes. So you end up cracking open boxes that are all over the place. There's also duplicated parts in different boxes. So there's like four for an optional kit of the same screw that is also in a fuselage kit. So you gotta figure out when to use one, what, where, uh, and you gotta basically keep track of everything. Our system is put it all on the table, as you can see here. All the stuff that we need for that job, we'll put it on the table so that we know where it is and we don't have to go digging for parts. And then when we're done, we'll put everything back in their original boxes so we can find it later based on the inventory list. Um, that seems to be working pretty well. But in general, it's, it's pretty hard to find stuff. Um, you have to go through the, the notebook and uh, look and see where the stuff is and then dig through the box to try and find it. But as you can see, like this thing is just chock full of nuts and bolts that are pretty much all the same size. So we put the ones that we need out on the table, find the ones that we need for that project, and then when we're done, we put them back in. And that seems to be working pretty well. Mm. Anything else? That's it. That is the latest update.